Do not perceive me. I'm gonna be sent to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> Hello, lovely viewer. Someone's feeling kind of nosy. Hmm? I'm about to share something that most fic readers would never dare reveal. So, I went through my AO3 history. I compiled all of the fanfics I read in 2022, took their stats, shoved them in a spreadsheet, crunched the data, just to take a look at the numbers, see if my taste has changed from years prior, find any trends. And I was actually pretty surprised by the results. So, since you guys are cool and I trust you, I thought it'd be fun to share some of my AO3 figures with you. Not all of it, the only people who were ever going to see the entirety of my AO3 history are me, my FBI agent, and God, but I am comfortable sharing a good chunk of it with you, which is what I'm gonna do. Time to expose myself, let's go. Also, my shirt does not just say MILF, it's man, I love fan fiction. <laughs> if you like it, it comes in t-shirt and sweatshirt form on my store. Also, before I reveal all of my deep, dark fan fiction cryptid secrets, I just want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Sakura Ko and Tokyo Tree. Sakura Ko and Tokyo Tree are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that offer a huge variety of different goodies for you to munch on, as well as a way to enjoy Japanese culture from the comfort of home. If you're interested in more traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snacks, then Sakura Ko is the perfect match for you. Each Sakura Ko box will include specialty teas and one piece of special Japanese tableware. But if you want the latest and greatest limited edition snacks, then Tokyo treats more your speed with seasonal snacks, an instant ramen bowl, and a drink in every box. Each Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat box comes with 20 snacks, if you can believe it. Booklets are also included with each box that go over all the different snacks as well as the monthly theme, so you can decide what you want to try first. Tokyo Treat's January theme is Snack in New Year. I really love this month's drink, which was the Fanta Premier Pear Soda. It almost gave off champagne vibes. Whew. Not explode. Yo. It's not too sweet either. Like it's on the right side of sour for pear, but not overwhelmingly so. The bite-sized azuki butter toast. Oh, they're like little bites. It's almost like cereal. I have never had anything like this before. My taste buds are so confused, but they're also very, very happy. <laughs> and even the Spy X family Anya candy. Bet you're excited to see what this one tastes like. It tastes like psychic child. I think it's Sakura flavored. Oh no, it's tropical. That is nice. God damn, that's really good. Sakura Ko's January theme is New Year's in Nikata, with plenty of rabbit themed goodies as 2023 is the year of the rabbits. From the Snow Rabbit Soft Chew, it reminds me of those sweets you get at amusement parks that are covered in sugar, but like on the inside is something soft and um, like a gummy. The Rabbit Hosui, which is like a marshmallow. They're so cute, I do want to eat them, you know? Like cuteness aggression. That is like an improved peep with jam inside. The Hatsune Okaki. These rice crackers are so deceiving. They look like they're just like these sugar cookies, right? But they're actually spicy and savory and the sugar is like the perfect little bit of sweetness on top. This is like a fig that's labeled fluff, but there's like a little bit of angst nestled deep inside. You're like, oh yeah, it's just gonna be all fluff, but then, Nope. And my personal favorite, the Ichigo Hime Strawberry Crepe. I'm really, really excited to try this crepe. <laughs> on the front door. This has no right to be this good. What the hell? I may just have to order this crepe brand in bulk. If you're interested in trying out Sakura Ko or Tokyo Treat for yourself, then use my code Koli for $5 off your first box through my links in the description. The variety is amazing. I love seeing the themes that come with each month as well as the flavors they bring and being able to try all these curated snacks just be so freaking happy. So if you're interested in one box or another or both, I highly recommend giving it a try. Thank you again so much Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat for continuing to sponsor my content. Let's get back into it. All right, gang, time to cast in your votes. How many fix did you think I read in 2022? Just Ballpark estimate. I feel like the real number may disappoint some of you. I am a fanfic aficionado, a fanficionado, if you will, not an e-reader. I'll give you a few more seconds to guess. The number of fics I read in 2022 is 1,267. That's it? You what? That averages out to roughly 106 fix per month and three to four per day. Do you want to guess my word count? I'll give you another few seconds. The total word count for all the fix I read on AO3 in 2022 1,319,684. You know how some people relax by playing video games or watching TV or scrolling through social media? 
reading fanfic is how I relax. So the hardcore fic readers that are scratching their heads like, what? It is so tiny! Hear me out, I have my reasoning. You don't have to be so disappointed in me, I'm sorry. One, funnily enough, I've been reading a lot of thread fics this year, which aren't included in that number. Thread fics exist on Twitter where people just create fics tweet by tweet, piece by piece. It's honestly an interesting phenomenon and it's something I'm gonna make a video about at some point, but I find that as I'm reading throughout the day, it's a bit more palatable, digestible, and the red fix give me a bit more pause to kind of be like, okay, I have to wait until the author, you know, uploads more, so I'm gonna go do the dishes, or polish my shoes. So yeah, Lord knows how many thread fix I've read this past year, especially since they're on the shorter side. So I do. I'm often in the habit of rereading some of my favorite fics rather than going out and finding new ones. My most read fic I revisited 74 times in the last year, which granted that number goes up whenever you go through a chapter as well, but still. And thirdly, I gotta make videos for you guys. I have to eat, I have responsibilities. For those of you who are like, how the hell did you read over a thousand fics? That's crazy, what the f Again, hear me out. One, I read my fics throughout the day rather than all in one sitting. Two, the typical fanfics I read are really not all that long. If you take my word count, 21,319,684, and divide that by the number of fics, which is 1,267, the average fic length you get is 16,827, which is apparently the length of a small novel or novella and takes about 40 minutes to an hour to read. So I'll just say 45 minutes. If I'm gobbling up three to four fics a day, that means two to three hours of reading daily, which again, split up throughout the day, really isn't all that much. And three, I mean, it's part of my job to be in the know with fan culture, and fan fiction is a very big part of fan culture. I'm just doing my job, okay? I love that I'm simultaneously trying to defend myself and playing devil's advocate. Two to three hours of reading fic a day, I'll average it out to 2.5 for 365 days. What is that? Ooh, 662.5 hours. Okay, and how many days is that? <laughs> Okay, okay, that's not horrible, but basically, if we're looking at the math and discounting leap year, I would have spent every minute of every day in the month of February reading fanfic. 21,319,684 words put into pages is approximately 47,377 pages. About 158 books read this year, wow! Oh my god, big brain over here. Pedantic, cerebral, I am enlightened. That's around 13,300 page books a month, like almost every other day you're picking one up. As for the number of fandoms I read fix for, do you want to hazard a guess? The number actually surprised me because, well, I do bounce around a lot of fandoms, I typically don't read fix for all of them. I only have like a handful that I just fully invest into. But I did more bouncing around than I thought. The number of fandoms I read fanfic for was 14. 14 different fandoms. Here's the list if you're curious. My top ships. There were many more ships I did read fix for, but because there were so many of them, and in the grand scheme of it all, their numbers kind of went into the inky dinky percentages, I didn't include them. Looking at my top ship, it's honestly embarrassing how much I read for them. It really goes to show just which fandoms gave me brain rot recently. The number one ship I read fanfics for, making up 43% of the total fix I read Overall is Wang Xian, Wei Wu Xian, and Lan Wang Ji from the gay Xianxia novel Grand Master of Demonic Cultivation, MDZS. 43 percent. Nearly half of the fan fiction I read in 2022 was for these two. These two idiots in love. I hate myself. Oh, they have me whipped, dude. Just so much fanfic, so much good fanfic. It's like being put at an all-you-can-eat buffet and not being able to stop. My most read fic was a freaking <sighs> a Wang Xian Star Trek AU. Maximum brain rot reached. In second place at 15% in a similar vein is Hua Lian, Hua Chong, and Xi Lian from Heaven Officials Blessing, another gay Xianxia novel. Beautiful boys with long hair, pretty clothes, and compelling magical stories have me in a vice grip, what can I say? Cutting through the Danmei for a bit is Saku Atsu, a Haikyuu ship at 5%. They used to be rare pair where they interacted like a dozen times in the manga, but then it just 
blew up because of their potential together. And yeah, no, that also gave me brain rot, but I think was bigger in 2021 or 2020 for me. Not so much recently, but it's, it's still lingered. I am so sorry. We're briefly cutting back to gay Chinese fantasy hell with Mo Shang at 4% in fourth place. They're just the side pairing. They're not even the main pairing in the story. <laughs> ah! In fifth place, making up 3% of the total fix I read is Chili from Genshin Impact. Chili, like Sakuatsu, was I think bigger for me in 2021, 2020, but I still enjoyed reading some for it. In sixth place, also making up about 3%, is Galileo from Promare. I think it's because whenever I rewatch Promare, I just go on a fic binge and eat as much as I can and then I just don't touch it until the next time I rewatch Promare. And then finally in seventh place making up 2% of the total fix I read is Sado Sugu from Jujutsu Kaisen. The horrifically tragic ship it is, but it's friends to lovers, it hits different. Now for the tags and tropes. These are the top 30 tropes and tags that showed up in all the fanfics I've read in the past year. They're the most popular ones. Now, if you want the whole list of the top 70 tropes and tags I've read in the past year, as well as the spicier ones I'm not comfortable putting on YouTube, you can find it on my Patreon if you're curious. Just anything I'm too embarrassed to put here will be over there. It's really not anything that bad. I just get horribly embarrassed. Did you know that 56% of the fix I read in the past year have been AUs? It's your favorite characters in different scenarios, different worlds, different lives, but also not really, but they keep meeting each other and it's beautiful. There's so much fun. There's so much to explore and you can really get creative with them. Which AU showed up the most? I'll get to in a sec, but the second most popular tag that kept showing up throughout all the fix I read was Fluff. The ooey gooey moments just get ya. 47% of the fix I read had fluff in it. But hold up, in third place we have angst. 28% of the total fix had angst. It's a lot lower than I expected, truly. In fourth place, we have modern AU, which makes sense because a lot of the media I read for doesn't take place in the present time, and so people would put them in it for fanfiction reasons because it's entertaining and interesting. We have happy ending. I can't do too many unhappy endings or I get sad and cry and I don't like crying. In sixth place, we have hurt comfort. It's always one of my faves. Seventh place is smut. To be fair, a lot of stories just happen to have smut in them. They're not exclusively smut, but smut is smut. Number eight is probably going to disappoint a lot of you, but <laughs> I'm just baffled I read that much. Mm. Number eight is Omegaverse. I'm gonna be sent to the Shadow Realm. I read a lot of Omegaverse in the last year. I blame Wang Xian. There's so much Omegaverse for them. <laughs> it's really good. Wang Xian just has such a great blend of Omegaverse content. Like there's the cutesy domestic ones, there's the super spicy intense ones, there's like the dramatic political intrigue ones. 14% of all the fix I read were Omegaverse. That is insane. Number nine is pining and a little over half of that is mutual pining. Number 10 is established relationship. Might be a bit of a hot take here, but there are a lot of times where I'm just not in the mood to see characters fall in love for the hundredth time. I want to see them when they're already comfortable with each other and stable and then something happens and their relationship is tested somehow. Or like vignettes and moments after they get together. In a similar vein, number 11 is post-canon. Kind of similar reasoning, just like you want to know what happens after the story ends. Number 12 is friends to lovers. Just that gradual change in the relationship and the pining goes so freaking hard. 13 is getting together. 14 is humor. 15 is <laughs> No further elaboration. Number 16 is graphic depictions, descriptions of violence. I don't think I read anything that violent. Maybe it's like the fantasy sci-fi stuff where there's like a lot of action or the horror stuff I read. All right. 17 is first time. And I was confused by this one because I don't typically go for first time on my own. Like if it's already in a story, then I'll read it. But that's the exact thing. A lot of the longer fix I read have first time stuff in them. So number 18 is canon divergence. It's a lot lower than I expected. I guess a lot of AUs are already canon divergent and I don't seek it out explicitly. 19 is domestic, whether it be domestic fluff, domestic feels, domestic bonding. Following that vein, number 20 is found family. 21 is podfic. I listen to a lot of podfics. A lot of these stats are just me wondering if I was in a fugue state for a lot of this. I mean, granted, I do read a lot of fic at like 2 a.m., but <laughs> 22 is dark, which is just like heavier content, very light on the fluff if there's any at all. Dark fic, dark comedy, dark past, yada yada. 
Yeah. 23 is married. 24 is misunderstanding slash miscommunication. 25 is angst with happy ending. 26 is slow burn. Yeah, I mean, I like a good slow burn but i'm not going to actively read it if i have the choice just because again i prefer moments and vignettes over like a really really slow story that takes a while to get the payoff because i'm impatient <laughs> 27 is magical realism urban magic modern magic anything putting magic in the contemporary world i love that genre so much these last three all are connected and I'm debating talking about them, but I've said worse, so it's fine. 28 is monster f 29 is dragons. I read roughly 100 fics involving dragons. How? And number 30 is size difference. Should I wear the cone of shame? There were a few numbers that really threw me for a loop. Like, I apparently read nine sugar daddy fics. I can recall maybe like two or three off the top of my head, but... I don't remember nine of them. There were some notable tags that caught my attention as I was going through all of these fix, which include light angst, like the lightest, just enough to make the fluff sweeter. It's gentle pain seasoning. Strangers to lovers speed run. Blasphemy. In this temple, it's more likely than you think. Monster f no, but there is gentle monster lovemaking. Oh, how wholesome. I don't know why I tag this as a slow burn. It's more like not a very fast burn. No plot whatsoever, just that warm fuzzy feeling for 15k words. Slap side of the fic. This baby can hold so much weird sex stuff in it, but also many, many feelings. Hey, it's my favorite brand of fic. Welcome to Trash Town. Alternate universe, Canada. But yeah, that about sums up my AO3 history. We did it! With minimal psychological damage, I hope. In all seriousness, I don't think anything was that surprising. Unless I'm wrong. Tell me if you were like really caught off guard by anything that was on here. What do these most popular tropes say about me? What do you think? What is your impression of me now, dear viewer? And again, if you want the full list of tags and tropes, as well as the spicier stuff I didn't put in this video, then check out the Patreon. You'll also get access to my personal list of fanfic wrecks, of which there are over 500. Thank you again so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Bye. <laughs>